Hey guys, what's going on? I'm John Malecki, and in this video, I'm partnering up with Carhartt and One Warm Coat to build this reclaimed industrial coat rack. And then we're going to be giving it away at the local store near me in Homestead, Pennsylvania. So stay tuned. So thank you guys one more time for tuning in. I am super stoked about this video. Um, I'm doing a simple reclaimed coat rack um, with some raw steel. I'm using a few different tools here, but I'm super pumped about this project, mostly because we're going to be giving it away at my local Carhartt store. Um, Carhartt has partnered up with One Warm Coat, and what One Warm Coat is doing is giving a coat to someone in the local area in need um, this winter. So what you do is just head down to the store and donate a gently used coat, and they'll donate it for you. So that's pretty awesome, and I'm super pumped to be involved. So moving along here, I am just uh, going by my standard process, cutting down the stock. Here, this is some reclaimed um, oak. You can see it's got some awesome saw marks in it, which I love, um, as you guys know from most of my builds. And I'm just cutting it down to size, um, it's about 36 inches. Here I'm, I'm running them through the joiner to get me some flat edges um, so everything fits together nice and square. After I have everything squared off, I um, get to the metal work here. I'm using some 10 gauge steel. Um, this is a cutoff of a sheet I use on another project. And I'm just going to make the grommet um, a nice simple curve. Uh, to do something like this, I mean, I just place my palm down on the um, piece of metal and then kind of rotate around it. And you can see, really simple, um, not much math to it. And I think it turned out being pretty cool. So I fire up my Lincoln Tomahawk here and just give it a nice easy quick cut. I freehanded this because I was going, I planned on shaping it after the fact. Um, and then I end up going and doing that with uh, both pieces at the same time. I just tack weld them together in the next scene and then hit them with my grinder. Um, simple and easy way to get two things to be the same size, at least in my experience. And um, right here I'm just squaring off the one edge on my oscillating spindle sander. Probably not the best way to do this, but it's what I have in the shop. So this is how I get it done. So like I said here, I'm just tacking these two pieces together and then I'll put them in a clamp and just go to town on them with my, um, my grinder and a flap disc, um, 40 grit flap disc. Essentially, I'm just going for a nice smooth curve here. Um, nothing crazy, it's pretty simple. And then I'm moving on to bending the hooks. So I weld, tack weld two um, bolts onto a piece of metal to give me something to bend them around that is consistent. Um, this isn't super precise, but this instance, it didn't really need to be. So um, what I'm doing here is just tacking up this little jig and then I'll go ahead and take some flat stock and bend it around. So I just take some flat stock, I measured about six inches back and then um, put the pivot point and fulcrum of the bend on that first bolt and just bend it around. Now you can see a little better view here and um, then I'm just getting them as close as I possibly can to being the same size and um, I'll take them over to my portable bandsaw that I have mounted to my bench and I'll cut them all down to being the same length and having the same size hook. And that is what I'm doing here. Um, cutting the hooks to size, I have them all pre-marked and um, this is just a really quick, easy way to cut those down. Hit them with the grinder to smooth out the edges a bit um, and prep them for paint. And this is all just so I don't have any like burrs or anything that are rough um, before I go ahead and finish them. I was gonna leave them shiny and then I decided paint looked a little bit better. Um, so I went ahead and painted them all so they were the same color. Here I'm marking off where I want to have holes um, for the mounting onto the coat rack itself. Um, I'm just countersinking some one and a quarter inch screws um, and letting uh, the glue hold the wood together. And I'm using the grommet as kind of a decorative piece and then using the screw heads to accent it. I'm using the um, same thing on all of the hooks. I'm doing this beforehand so it doesn't tear out on the paint and uh, just so it gives a little bit of a cleaner look in case I didn't bury the countersink enough into um, into these uh, 
J hooks and to the grommets. I should have used a drill press here, but I was um, bent for time and I really wanted to get this uh, all done with you know really simple hand tools minus the plasma cutter. Um, but most people can do something along the same lines with basically anything they have in their garage, which is why I think this is a really cool project. Here I'm applying some paint and it's just a flat iron rust-oleum metal paint um, and then finishing up the wood with my brush sander and my Rotex to get it to be nice and smooth. From there it's just assembly time. Projects like this are pretty great to use. Um, Daps Rapid Fuse, it dries quickly, uh, sets in three minutes and dries in 30, so I can get back to work and not have to wait overnight. Um, so that was a great application for this. Here I'm fiddling with my clamp and um, just bringing everything to square. Glue holds up great. And then it's on to fastening the grommet. I um, hold it in place and then I sink one screw in and uh, after I pre-drill. And then from there, I go ahead and pre-drill and sink the rest. I'm using a Vixbic here because it gives um, a square hole, I guess, to the countersink. And it goes in nice and straight and not crooked. And I do the same thing for all the J-hooks after I lay them out. So I go ahead and finish up the last two hangers here, get them screwed in, and then it's on to finish. Um, I'm just using an oil-based polyurethane here and sealing all of the parts with it, metal and wood. So I want to thank each and every one of you for watching this video and I really want to thank Carhartt and One Warm Coat for jumping on board to be a part of this as well. If you want to enter to win this coat rack, you need to go down to my local Carhartt store in Homestead in the waterfront and bring one of your gently used coats. You take your coat, you donate it to the cause, and voila, you're entered to win the contest. I'll be drawing a winner on December 31st, New Year's Eve, and then personally meeting you at the store to hand over the rack. I'm super stoked to be able to do this and get to meet one of you guys, um, as well as do something to try my little bit to give back to the community. If you're not local and you still want to donate and participate, you can go to onewarmcoat.com, I believe, and I'll have a link for that down below, as well as you can go to one of your local Carhartt stores and do donate a gently used coat. I believe most of the stores across the country are participating in this contest. Um, excuse me, not contest, in this donation drive, which is for a great cause. It does get chilly for most of us during the winter time. Um, so once again, thank you Carhartt. Thank you One Warm Coat. Thank you guys for watching. It's been an amazing year. I can't say enough for how grateful I am for each and every one of you for subscribing, for liking, for sharing, for being a part of what I do and making this as much fun as it has been. If you like what I'm doing, please subscribe. If you're enjoying my content, please check me out on my other social platforms. We're doing a killer job on all of those to engage and have some awesome conversations and behind the scenes builds and stuff. And besides that, thank you guys once again. And until next time, you know, keep building, have a wonderful holiday, and I'll see all of you in 2017.